Welcome, fight fans. This is More Than a Fight podcast. I am your host, Jose Alfredo Alcazar. This is episode 11. And today, your co host is. John. Juanillo is out on a mini vacation in Mexico, so good for him. Mexico City. He's, you know, he's having a ball, yeah. at least from what we know. And uh, today, sorry, guys, we're going to jump into uh, the card from last night on ESPN which saw Jose Pedraza take on Richard Comey, which was actually a really good main event. And we had some uh, ac- excellent um, undercard fights and some really uh, one brutal knockout. Well, two knockouts, but one was pretty pretty brutal, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but let's start in the main event. Yeah, John? Yeah, this was actually a great fight. Um, it was, on paper, it didn't look that great, right? But they're both off uh, losing. And yeah, well, they they're bo- they've both been in some tough battles, and have both taken on some of the elite guys in their in the weight class. Um, Pedraza's taken on the likes of Tank Davis, Jose Ramirez, Richard Comey's taken on famously Vasily Lomachenko. Mm-hmm. I mean, these guys have taken on some some top tier opposition. Unfortunately, they've fallen short. So this was more of a fight for like to stay relevant for both of them. Yeah, a hundred percent. This is they and they fought like it. It was a great fight. Mm-hmm. You know, I think very. It was back to back and back. A little back and bit, forth. Yes, I agree. But I think uh, Pedraza pulled it out. Yeah, near the end, I agree with you. I thought Pedraza might have pulled it off because he, I gave him the first round, and after that, I felt like uh, Comey won two to five yeah but the one part where i have a little um well well now that i think about it after i watched it again that i have a little hesitation kind of agree with the with the final result is because when um comey got that cut on his left eye it was because of a headbutt from pedraza oh yeah but the referee missed it and he didn't call it um an accidental um, headbutt or a cut from a headbutt, which it should have been called that. He called it uh, from a punch, if I'm not mistaken. Well, no, so that even, was incorrect. Even the ref missed it. Then they went back and looked at the replay, and the commission still said, no, 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 there was a punch before the headbutt. Yeah, no. like, all right, get out of here. I didn't see that. I didn't yeah, agree with that. I don't know. Not even the <clears throat> commenting crew. You know, yeah. and like, look, he was doing damage. No, he did very good. I mean, both guys had their moments, which is crazy because. Like I said, after the first round, I felt like Comey had his moment. But then once that um, cut happened, that's where I felt like Pedraza took over. Yeah, especially like and then the two. The reason why I think he won it was round six and nine. Yes. Yeah. The, 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 he was doing the far more significant damage. And don't get me wrong, like Comey was in it. It's just, yeah, there's a couple here that just, it was just too much. And I think. You know, am I mad at the draw? Not really. You know what I mean? Yeah, both guys put in put in a, some very a great performance because I, like you said, they both knew what was at stake. Um, I don't mind seeing a rematch. Maybe put it as a co-main under a good fight. Um, I'm not sure which one that would be, but I would like to see it again. I mean, both guys, both guys gave it their all, and like I said, I felt like they traded um spots as far as like the momentum. Early on, Richard Comey, then yeah. late, um, Pedraza. Yeah. And, um, and because Pedraza was doing some body work throughout the fight, you know, trying to get him, trying to get him to slow down and like stop that power because Comey did look a little bit stronger than Pedraza out there. Pedraza and he just landed, looked more he landed some good shots on Pedraza too huh? that you could tell hurt Pedraza because at one point I thought Comey might be able to stop him. Yeah. And then, uh, the Comey. I'm sorry, before the, oh yeah, the co-main, we can start with that. Um, Jared Big Baby Anderson? Against Miljan Rovkanen? I could be pronouncing that wrong. I believe he's a uh, Croatian. Yes. Yeah, Miljan yeah, Rov- Rovkanen? Rov- Roverson, I think, maybe. But, yeah, it was, it was a okay fight. It was entertaining while it lasted because I, 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 I'm always happy to see the guy that knows he's the B-side or has been brought in against this top prospect. I'm always happy to see when that g- 
guy that gets brought in as like the sacrificial lamb to say to say it in another way or the best way to put it. Yeah. I'm glad that he came to fight because he actually landed a couple shots on Anderson. Granted, Anderson has been out of the ring had been out of the ring up until this point for about 259 days. Yeah, because I, of an injury. Yeah, and then it was interesting. They're talking about how he doesn't like to talk about his injury. I'm curious to see hear more about that. But hey, he looked looked like a like he's ready. You know what I mean? This the mixture of shots, and then I mean maybe it's the opponent, but. What do you oh, no. think? He's he's the, he's the, got the total package, man. The yeah. dude for a heavyweight moves like a middleweight. It's crazy. Yeah. The way he boxes, the way he throws his punches, his jabs. Just right here. He's just he is. He could be the next top tier heavyweight. Because yeah. I don't see Tyson Fury staying in the game too much longer, and then Alexander Usyk's a little long in the tooth, as they say. So, I mean, the heavyweight division could very easily be big babies to own for yeah. a long time coming unless somebody else pops up because the dude's got everything, man. Yeah, but he's a real good-looking heavyweight prospect. And then he was also saying, which is kind of, I thought it was kind of funny, the broadcast, he's like, he's not no failed college football or basketball player. He's been uh, boxing since he was a child. So he's like, they were comparing him coming up almost like a Fury and uh, Usyk. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, but I just thought it was funny. They're like, he's not a failed football player. Like, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Just say that he's a good box. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then um, we'll skip over here uh, to this this young Torres Jr. Oh, yes, yes. Richard Torres Jr. against uh, Marco Antonio Canedo. Yeah. He was from Mexico, yeah, this guy. Dude, uh, he's got to be young. He won the silver medal in 2020 at the yeah, Olympics. Olympian. Yeah, Olympian. That's right. Yeah. And he's this now he's three and zero. Um, and he's not spending a lot of time in the ring. They were his last fight was only uh, 58 seconds or something like that. Yeah, that dude's got crazy power, man. Coming I in just, looking like a Bob Selleck. Oh, I know, right? He pulls <laughs> off the stash with. I'm like, damn, bro, you. He pulls it off. Like some people can just pull off the stash. Yes. And it looks perfect on them. Yeah, like, and there's other people. It's like, oh, look, it has, even has doing a, that. its own middle part. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he does a great job. Yeah, like I said, I was like, dude, this guy, man, good for you. Not but, everybody can pull it off. But poor guy got smoked. Oh man, yeah, this was the ropes. Oof, oof. Yeah, he was already oh. good. It was the but rope. Even even the first knockdown, he technically hit. Uh, Canedo when he wasn't supposed to. Oh, yeah, Canedo yeah, yeah. was already down on his knees and he hit him again. No, that was the first knockdown. Yep. But then even the second knockdown, it was just, ooh, it was brutal. And you hate to see somebody go face down like that because then that's when you're like, ooh, it makes you pause a little and you're like, I hope he's okay because he was down for a bit. And even when they sat him up on the stool, he was struggling to get to get onto the stool. So I was a little, a little worried. I was like, I hope he's okay. And he just, that was a brutal Did way to go it? down. And those punches he took were just right on the button. And it's, I'm just, I hope he's okay. I mean, I know they, they rushed him over to the hospital. Yeah. Um, just because obviously you got to take those procedures for health and safety reasons. So. Oh, no. But I don't know if you noticed, like, how long they just had the camera on his eyes. Oh, yes. I, yeah. I didn't like that. I, Usually I felt that they a little cut away quicker. You I was like, I mean? okay, uh, we we obviously see the man's hurt. I, yeah. I, I, I felt a little uncomfortable with that because you even see some tears coming out of his eyes. It's like the guy's just been laid out. He's yeah, done he's probably know there. where he is. Yeah. I didn't, yeah, I, I thought that was a little overkill, but. Yeah, it was a little weird. A little yeah. weird. And then uh, we will touch on the, the fight right before the big, big baby, and, uh, and it's going to be F.A. Juaba. F.A. Jogba, yeah. Yeah. Versus um, jo- Josef Darmos. Yes, sir. And it was a decent fight, you know, but I, he, F.A. dominated the fight the whole time, basically. And gets out of there with a second round uh, TKO. So you, you're looking at three different heavyweight fights, right? Mm-hmm. And, I mean, we have to figure out what does that mean. 
well, not what does it mean, but what what can we make conclusions on? Like, what's where, where are we going with the heavyweight scene? Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, right now the heavyweight picture. I mean, obviously, it's going to be dominated by Usyk and Tyson Fury because of what happened last weekend with Usyk beating Joshua in the rematch, and now the fight that we all expect to happen, and it sounds like it's going to happen. Um, I read on Boxing Scene that the early reports, so there's some reports saying that they're going to fight in um, the Middle East Super Bowl weekend or the weekend of the Super Bowl. So I'm assuming it's probably going to happen on Sunday or maybe early Saturday because it, if it's in Saudi Arabia and they broadcast it live, it would take. Well, but that would be tricky because they would have to do it before the Super Bowl because the Super Bowl would start at 3.30 if they were to do it. Oh, I'm sorry. What am I thinking? The Super Bowl's on Sunday. I'm an idiot. Never yeah, mind. So they're they're going to do it on Saturday. I don't know why I was thinking. But uh, what yeah. time are so they going to do it? So what happened Saturday? Are they going to do it in the morning? I mean. I, I think see. they're going to do it how they did Joshua Usyk. Uh, no, no. I and, think. And uh, just do it at our time would be 2.30, 3 o'clock yeah. on Saturday. It, I, it has to be at. So that would be 7 p.m. Time. in New York. Yeah, that... um, six p.m. I'm sorry. So if we if we get it at three here in Las Vegas, New York would get it at six. London would get it around eleven. I think is that right? My time. I gotta get my time zones right. But I'm pretty sure that's how it would work out. So that that's not really that bad if you think about it. I mean, it would suck a little for us, but we can make adjustments, and it would be a great thing for the East Coast to get it at that time. Yeah, no, East East Coast would eat it up at that time, mm-hmm. 100%. I, yeah. that, I think that's a more likely scenario. You know, it's a little bit early for the Brits, but, eh, okay. But at least America, because if you put it to it in the morning, ain't nobody watching it, you know? And especially for a fight that big, you have to, you have to make sure you, you get all eyes on it. You know, which is the American market, you know? Right. And then, I mean, so we have that going on. Yes. And then we have all these other heavyweight fights coming up that's really going to shake up the scene. The heavyweight landscape all of a sudden looks um, very interesting. If, obviously, like I said, we put that one aside, but and it's a massive fight. And let's hope it does happen next. And Tyson Fury doesn't ask for a fight in between, which I don't see why he would. Mm. Um, and I always found it hilarious when people or or some friends of mine would say Tyson Fury retired, right? I'm like, no, he let go of the ring magazine, but that doesn't mean anything because he's retaining the WBC, and that's the one that counts. Hey, but he's not listed on box rec anymore. He's not even on the pound for the heavyweight current mm. heavyweights. He's not on the list. But I read an article saying that he um he already reached out to the WBC and told him he's gonna mm. he's gonna uh, supposedly not retire. And take on Alexander Usyk. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, and <laughs> that I don't even know how that fight plays out. I mean, obviously Fury's going to be the favorite, and rightfully so, based on what he's done. But, um, like, but Usyk's got a great shot at it, man. I mean, I there, how do you? I don't. Not I disagree. Give Usyk any chance? Like, look, the the size of Joshua gave problems to Usyk, right? We have to. We can admit that, right? Like yes. the size gave him a little bit of problem. Fury has size, and I think he's a little bit more skillful than Yusuf. You know what I mean? And I think it's just going to be causing big problems. It's just too much of a size mismatch. mismatch. Think about length and all that stuff, you know? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see that. I mean, yeah. after what I saw Usyk do after that ninth round, mm-hmm. I thought Joshua was going to knock him out. And Usyk came right after Joshua, so I don't know, man. Hey, they I all thought... They all thought Fury was dead, and he came back like the Undertaker. (laughs) So there's going to be a ton of intrigue. I mean, I'm excited for that fight, but okay, let's set that one aside. Yeah, yeah. And then... Let's go over to Ruiz and Ortiz. What do you think? This is going to be part of the... Depending on who wins, how it shakes out. Um, I'm obviously... I think Andrew Ruiz should win, because King Kong, I think, is... 44, 45? Yeah, 44 to 47 in that age. Yeah, I know. I know the joke <laughs> is that nobody knows how old he is. But yeah. he, it, the, he's in his 40s. Yeah. And Andy Ruiz looks great, though, man. All the stuff I've seen, videos yeah. and stuff on social media, he looks like he has been training 
in the right mindset because physically it tells you that he's in the right mindset. Mm. So he's he's coming to win. And hey. I don't see how he doesn't win. Not to say that uh, Luis Ortiz isn't going to be difficult because he's a southpaw and yeah. he gave Wilder in the second fight a lot of trouble. But obviously Wilder erased that. But oh, King Kong has shown that he can be very difficult to handle. And is was Ru, who was Ruiz training with before? Oh, that's right. He was with Eddie Reynoso, but for this fight, he won't be with Eddie Reynoso. Really? Yeah. Interesting. First time? Since he went with Eddie, yes. Oh. Uh, yeah. Do you think- uh, I can't. I'd have to look up who exactly is going to be in his corner. Oh, uh, dang it. Let me see if I can find it here. Or if you can find it, let me know. Because, yeah. yes, that's right. He's going to be with um, a different, uh, different corner, man. I want to say it's Capetillo. I might be wrong about that. But, um... Uh, sorry, he's trading with Alfredo Osuna? Oh, okay. I thought yeah. it was Capetillo. Let me see. Uh, but no, you're... Yeah. yeah, Osuna. Okay. Got it. All right, and then, so you have that, and then next we're going to have the, uh, so that's on the 4th? Yes. Uh, we'll and probably then, talk about that more on, on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, we'll go more in depth uh, later in the week. Yeah, and then um, the next one is going to be. Uh, uh, Joe Joyce against. Um, yes. Parker. You are correct, sir. So yeah, we have Joe Joyce versus Parker out in Manchester. What? Yeah. Oh. AO Arena. I thought it was in Australia for some. No, yeah, at the O2. No. Or A- I'm sorry, you're right. You're right. I don't know why I said at the O2. Um, this is gonna be a really good fight, man. Yep. I know Joe Joyce is undefeated, but um, Parker is not a pushover, and he trains with um Tyson Fury. So, this I think will be Joe Joyce's toughest test to date. Oh yeah, and I mean, especially at 36. You don't really have much more time. Yeah, you know he has I mean? to speed it up. So because he, he, you're right. I didn't this, realize he was 36 either. This is a must win. If you really think about it, right? Well, if he wants to... I think his best bet will be to take on somebody like Anthony Joshua. Or... Hmm. Unless he can somehow... Get, well, actually, he can get the winner of um, Usyk and Fury. Only because uh, he's with Frank Warren. And Frank Warren obviously works with Bob Arum. So if he wins this fight, he might be in line to uh, fight the winner of Usyk Fury. Hmm. Assuming Tyson Fury doesn't retire. And then, yeah, that's 24th of September. So that's going to be interesting. A Sunday. Yeah. And there's going to be another card on that same day. Uh, I don't know why we're doing this, but we're doing it. <laughs> really? but no, we're talking about heavyweights. I mean, not stray off the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's I didn't know. But that. yeah, th- I didn't realize that. But Joe Joyce will actually, if he pulls it off, he could get he could be the um mandatory or the next up for the winner of Fury Usyk. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Only like I said, only because he's with Frank Warren, and Frank Warren represents Tyson Fury. Oh, I got. Gotcha. And then, like I said, Frank Warren work, works with Bob Arum. Do you? I don't know. You think if Tyson Fury beats Usyk, he would accept? It? Okay, that's way too far down the line. I don't well, think he I would don't take know, a because I think if Tyson fight. Fury wins, I can actually legitimately this time see him retiring unless it's a really close fight and it's rematch material. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. But the, it, it, you're right. Joe Joyce does need to speed it up. So yeah. uh, he's in. He's with the right person, with the right promoter. So uh-huh. if he wins, he will have the fast track or he will be on the fast track. I'm sorry. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then... Coming in and on uh, Saturday, October fifteenth. That's right. The uh, return of the Bronze Bomber. Yeah. I I am excited to see what he looks like, man. You know, um, he's been training here in Vegas at the UFC PI, the Performance Institute. Mm-hmm. So that's always cool to see because I think if I was a fighter, I would be training at the Performance Institute every day. 
Like, why would you go anywhere else? Bring your coaches with you. And, right. Yeah. Because they give you everything. I didn't know that, like, Dana White had, like, a open door policy kind oh, of for, on. like, for boxers, a, too. For a I boxer like of Wilder? Of course. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You're right. I would absolutely be like, uh, yeah, hurry up. Get in here. <laughs> I would do the exact same thing because that's, that's good. Um, Dude, they had him. For you. They had him hanging out at the Contender Series on a Tuesday. That's right. You and Juan told me that. Yeah. He was in the crowd watching the Dana White Contender Series. So. Yeah. So but I'm I'm glad that think, he's training there. Uh, because we're talking about training, I'm curious. I know this is going to sound silly, but I'm curious to see if he's running. And I bring that up because I'm pretty sure that when his last fight with Tyson Fury, he said he's still doing some of the... He was, he obviously, he changed things to a certain degree, but I'm pretty sure he's one of those boxers that doesn't run. And I bring that up because of his conditioning. Mm. And to me, that um, that that points a lot to why he gets tired, and that's where his power is a gift and a curse yeah. because he doesn't focus all that much on his conditioning. Because before Tyson Fury, the man never saw the later rounds. There was no such thing as later rounds. The last guy to take him deep into a fight was um, King Kong Ortiz, who he knocked out. I want to say it was in. The seventh or eighth round in their second fight mm -hmm. but i think that's why he gets so gassed out and i'm wondering if robert helenius his plan going into the fight's going to be well let me push him into the later rounds because i know he gets gassed and that's when i will pounce on him oh 100 percent. but that's easier said than done because he's got that damn right hand that's a sledgehammer well, and if that's you're gonna thing. if the that's right gonna hand. be your game plan you had better avoid that damn right hand imagine, like, it, like your life depends on it. Imagine if they taught him a left hand. I, I mean, <laughs> if Deontay Wilder had conditioning and knew how to box properly, nobody would beat him. Oh, Tyson no. Fury wouldn't beat him. AJ, nobody. Yeah. There I would mean, be no heavyweight that could beat him. The with first that power. time, it wasn't easy for Fury to win, you know? But second time was. But that'll be an interesting fight. We'll see. See yeah. where it, Wilder it is, and and Robert Helenius did beat Adam uh, Adam Kon uh, Konowski. And hey, that's a big come up for Helenius if he beats Wilder. You know, oh, absolutely, like, that would be massive for him because it would catapult him yeah, into, into a conversation. maybe even a mandatory position, or even taking on Andrew, Andrew Ruiz in a pay per view fight mm. instead of Deontay Wilder. Yeah, I could definitely see that if uh, Andy beats Lewis. And Hellenius beats Wilder? Well, yeah, Ooh. if I'm PBC, that's the move. And that's yeah. why they're doing it in this fashion. It would be in 2023, I would assume. Oh, uh, yeah. Because yeah. there's not enough time left right. in the year for them to fight. Yeah, most of, most of these fights we're talking about are all going to be early 2023, 20, like March, April. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, that'll be very interesting. There's a lot. Now that we talk about it, yeah. now my head, my, my mind that's is going a little like, more. There's a, like, lot of, a lot of these fights coming up determining paths like what's gonna happen who's gonna fight who and speaking of that are we gonna do this again i mean little dillian white versus anthony joshua three they're one and one i mean both guys i can see how it makes sense it's not the most attractive but i can see how it makes sense especially if you're the zone you need to put aj out there because you did sign him mm -hmm. to a massive deal so that i mean I don't see how it how it doesn't make sense. It, it both guys need to come well, more so Anthony Joshua. He needs another fight, and Dillian White makes sense after Dillian White's showing against Tyson Fury. Mm. So uh, it makes sense. It's not unfortunately I don't find it that attractive, but I understand why it would happen. Out of out of ever we talked about right, where do you see Jared Big Baby Anderson fitting in? That's an excellent question. Like Torres, um, Torres is way too young. We're just highlighting because it was a vicious knockout, and it's, yeah. he's he's definitely on the come up. But oh, yeah, forget Torres. Before we, just baby, big big baby Anderson. Oof, that's a great question. Only because it's hard because of everything we just pointed out. So, Andy Ruiz Ortiz winner is gonna fight winner of Wilder Helena. So that's there. Mm -hmm. And then we already got uh, Usyk and Fury. Mm -hmm. Scheduled for, uh, if we believe the report, it's very early February. And then let's say these two gentlemen fight, uh, Joshua Joyce. and White. Oh, yeah. 
And then, yes, like you said, uh, jo- if I'm Joyce, I don't even look Anderson's way because I'm yeah. going to wait. Um, I, I want Fury Usyk winner. Exactly. So that takes him out of the picture. So the only thing uh, Jared Anderson could do is maybe fight somebody like Parker if Parker were to lose. Mm. And that's a difficult fight. Yeah. No matter how good Jared Anderson is, because Parker is a seasoned veteran. He's been in there with the likes of Anthony Joshua. So it, it would be a hell of a fight. Well, there is Daniel Dubois, but if I'm Daniel Dubois, I stay away from Jared Anderson. I would think there's a couple heavyweights. They're like, I'm just going to stand back for a bit, see what happens in all this. And when the whole smoke clears, it's a little bit more defined. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think right now it's going to be hard for Jared Anderson to, any, to get any of the top guys in the ring with him. He's going to have to force his way as, via mandatory. Well, I don't know how else he's going to do it. He would, what about any, like, if there's, uh, say, like we said, maybe Ortiz lose. Well, Adam, Adam, Adam Kownowski would be a good fight for him, okay. uh, Jared Anderson, because uh, Kownowski uh, lost to Hellenius, so going after him would be a good idea. Or, but Otto Wallen is a, is a dangerous guy. I don't know. I know. I know. We talked about all the skills that Jared Anderson has, and he does, and he looks like he's the real deal. But Otto Wallen gave Tyson Fury all he could handle. So I mean, if I'm Jared Anderson, I think about that one. I think he has the skills to be Otto Wallen, but Wallen hmm. has shown he can hang. No, hundred percent. All right. So I mean, that's. That's definitely something we have to keep track going on, and uh, it'll yeah, be there's very so interesting many, there's so many potential matchups, and oh, if yeah. this one wins, if that one loses, there's a lot of drama, and it's awesome. I think it's great, and I think <clears throat> boxing is going to be remiss if they don't start promoting these fights, saying, "Hey, look at the landscape now, right? We have these two winners, Usyk and Joshua. That's sealed up. I'm sorry, Usyk and Fury. That's sealed up." Mm-hmm. But we have all these other great fights waiting to happen that actually mean something. You know what I mean? No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so, speaking of fights that mean nothing, let's go. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, so a little two fights, one night. You know what I mean? And really quick, I just want to point out the promotion that was done for this. I was like, I was impressed by it. Oh, dude. I was like, dude, it was everywhere on social media. And I, I have the app, so it popped up on my phone a couple different ways. I'm like, dang, man, they're really promoting dude, this. Dude, these guys have been, KSI has been living on the internet for like a, over a decade. You know what I mean? Like he's been doing this internet shit for a long time. I didn't realize it was that long. Oh, that, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Into they, it. Or that they, deep, like a decade. That's insane. That's, that's a lot of these guys. It's it's hard to imagine, but they've been around doing this for a very long time, and so That's they know wild. all the tricks. A decade. Yeah, and so, I mean, you saw, I, you have to see it. Like the stadium is actually full. There's, no, yeah, yeah. This is was I like saw that. was like twelve dollars on top of the DAZN membership as well, right? It was still a pay per view. Yeah, on know? on my app it said ten bucks. Oh, it's it okay, might be ten 12. bucks. Yeah, if, so maybe like, if you're not a subscriber. But yeah, like, okay, ten bucks on top of your DAZN membership. You know what I mean? And it was a slow fight week, so maybe they did make some money. Oh, I, I, I think so. Because, like, there's a lot of people I follow on Twitter. They're like, ah, no UFC this weekend. We're going to have to watch the KSF fights. <laughs> Fuck my life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, so it was interesting. I mean, yeah, you're right. They're generating money. Yeah, At the end of the day, that's what matters. There's if eyes, generate money. money. And this is, listen, there's a bunch of guys. Trying to work out and do fighting. I don't see no harm in it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and this is the first one. He uh, knocked this guy out first. Well, yeah. Knock out the first round. Right. Uh, but he's a rapper. This is Swarm's British rapper. <laughs> but they say he was an ex-pro uh, football player. Or semi-pro. Really? Whatever the hell that means. Huh. Yeah, so that was the first fight of the night. So he was the very first, night, uh, first fight of the card. They had a bunch of random people fighting. And like I kind of gave up because I didn't know who any of these people were. Um, Maybe some of them are UK based. Well, no, it was like a mixture. Like I think there was like some maybe amateur fighters or like you know one in an O fighters, right? Doing four rounders, but then there was like internet celebrities mixed in. Like this, uh, let's see, 
the Filipino cat, Salty Poppy. Look at this guy. I've never heard of him. Man. This is the girl great. You know? And then it was hilarious. Eubanks, uh, after the fight, he's like, he looks like a, he works at a cheese factory, nine to five, but he, <laughs> he knocked him. <laughs> Salty Poppy. Oh, yeah. And then this is the next fight. This is or the last fight of the evening it was going to be Chaos Guy against Pineda. Fighting so, two in one night. I mean, two in hey, one. Props to him. Like I said, these guys know how to promote themselves. I'll give them that, man. As yeah. much as, and it's it's calculated yeah. smart, right? Like I'll fight a guy who has no idea to fight, and that's what they said at the broadcast. Like he was, I guess they're both late fillets. Like he had two fights pull out, and he had to replace them with somebody. Oh. And so Swarms, the rapper, is actually his buddy. And the guy was like, I'll fight you, you know, I'll help you out. And then, Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think this Panadia guy was actually like, nah, fuck you. Like, had a little beef coming into the fight. But the Panadia guy is horrible. He was complaining the entire fight, saying, like, uh, he got hit with a right. And he was like, I got hit behind the head. Like, I don't know. Right. But he's supposedly like two and five pro on box rec or something like that. I don't I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'll look him up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe. Anyway, I had to look this shit up when I was fucking looking the and so that's why We do our homework little people, thing. even for this stuff. <laughs> yeah, and see so little To be honest though, KSI Yeah. There's a, he's hanging out with uh, Logan Paul. Their Here's buddies. I don't understand. I thought KSI wanted to fight Jake Paul. That's Logan, the older brother. No, I know that. Hey, so, they're all about that money, bro. So Logan's like, yeah, there I'll raising there. his hand. Yeah, because it's like they're like friends in this whole boxing thing. Because I think I want to say I forget the first time Logan Paul came fought. I think it was KSI. Yes, it was. Yeah, I so you know what I'm saying? Like they. They were the first guys to really start doing this. I forget. I think that was the undercard. Uh, who was on that card? Because I had to watch that fight in order to watch a fight I wanted to watch on that <laughs> card. Does that make sense? Oh, like Amanda Serrano or something was on it? Yeah, yeah. somebody I wanted to watch yeah. was on there. I'm like, okay, I got to do this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you liked it. Get out of here. But like I said, hey man, props to these guys. They're generating money. They're yeah. putting asses in seats. So yeah, I mean, as much as some of us don't like it, see. we it's, gotta respect it. It's even out all the way up to the top. You know, like there's people there. You know, I would probably say like what fifteen thousand or something like that. That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I I find it interesting, and it's something that I feel that like too much people poo poo on, but it I, it brings more eyes to the sport. Right. right and why not you know and then off to some oh well, real quick because i i told you about this before we went on air so they're gonna do another one of these that because i saw it says x series one is that what it says what on is it short no the the ksi poster the image oh, okay hold on so if you bring it up again it says x x series there there so DAZN is going to do an X-Series 2, and I only found out because I was on the app, and I was looking, I was wanted to watch an um, oh, interview. And they're going to do Vitor Belfort against um, Rockman Jr. October 15th. Ooh, let me see. So that's X-Series 2. DAZN. So uh, Rockman's going to get his, uh, his opportunity after all to fight somebody like Vitor Belfort. Oh, there you go. Who would have knocked oscar del hoy out so i'm so happy oscar didn't fight because he could have gotten hurt i got it uh hold on but yeah you'll see what i'm saying it says i'm, I'm almost 100 percent sure it says x series yeah two. no you're you're 100 correct so obviously they're gonna dabble in this because and i think they're they're taking a page from uh showtime when they signed jake paul so they're gonna go okay you know what well let's Let's give this thing a shot. Uh, there you go. Yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Rockman, Vito Belfort, and Jay Swingler Charlie. I have no idea who the undercard is, but yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so I, they're trying to do some stuff. And yeah. I'm, hey, as Vito Belfort versus Rockman, I'm for that. Although, it's going to be rough watching Belfort fight. It's not going to be pretty. Well, this is Rockman's opportunity to beat 
somebody like Vitor and then right. make noise and try to get somebody else in the ring, right? Vitor, Vitor tried boxing a while ago and he got his ass beat. I forget what it was, but it was not a good showing. I think yeah. I might have been on Triller or something. Yeah, if I it had was to guess. some weird shit like that, and, and it was maybe the same night that Silva fought. It could be. Yeah, but he got. I think you up. might be right. Yeah, it was, it was weird. Right. But uh, yeah, we'll go on some odds and ends here. I got to talk about uh, one on Prime. I think that's another new thing that's coming out that. You know, we're oh, not really Amazon's going to carry it, huh? Yeah, you know, it's on Amazon oh, Prime. It, it is. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 it's on Amazon Prime, and then they they made sure to release it at a, like a evening time throughout the uh, U.S. It was because usually one is on at like three, four o'clock in the morning because they're fighting in Singapore and stuff like that. So it's hard to keep up. Like you, I only see highlights most of the time. Got it. But hey, man, dang. The, uh, they have Dimitri Mighty Mouse Johnson. And he had lost his belt to this Marais character. Uh, but uh, Demetrius looked freaking good. And then, oh, this is another thing I didn't tell you about. Because I, I, I kind of forgot, but now I'm looking at it. So uh, Rod Tong um, is a crazy Muay Thai guy versus Michael. That got called off. Um, they had nine fighters either miss weight, miss hydration, or not weigh in. So. In one championship, they have this rule where you have to get um, analyzed for your hydration level three times in the week leading up to the fight. And mm -hmm. you have to hit certain levels or you're, you're taking off too much weight. And so then weird shit happens. It's, it's, it's a shit show. Because, yeah, they had nine different fighters. Damn. Right? It's crazy. And they got to get it together. If Prime is behind them, that's huge. But and then, you got to get it together, man. Because they designed this system where, like, it's almost like California, right? Where they're measuring, measuring your hydration levels, but mm -hmm. it's even more in depth. But, yeah. like, yeah, they're, they're set up to where, like, okay, if you can't make the weight because you're messing up your hydration level, then it goes to a catch weight belt. And then if the other fighter agrees, and then there's a, a you know, 20% or something like that. But yeah, they had nine fighters for this card the first time on Prime Video. So I think a lot of the yeah. fighters got snuck by. Like, fuck this guy. We're going to let you go this time, you know? Yeah, but that's not a good look. I mean, yeah, 100%. If, if, like I said, if Amazon is behind you, you got to be on it. And then, yes, Demetrius came out, Oof. was doing some work. This is the second round. Uh, the first round, he was on the bottom and, and uh, was throwing elbows. And so that's how you see the guy at Marais. Uh, with the knee in his face, that cut on his uh, eyebrows it was actually from Demetrius on the bottom with the elbows. And then he, yeah, hold on. So he's going to fank a knee, hit him with the right, and then finish with the knee. I, 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 Oof. Yeah. Damn. He's, a, he's still the biggest, man. One of the greatest ever, and everybody forgets about him because he was a little guy, you know? But, yeah, the little guys often get um, overlooked, not even just in MMA and boxing, oh, too. Oh, no, everywhere. But it's yeah, like, here's some stats. So he was USC flyweight champion. He's one flyweight champion, flyweight terminal winner, flyweight Grand Prix winner. And then most consecutive title defenses in USC's history and tied. Like, you know, he has the stats. Damn. Yeah. Uh, so he's a, yeah, he's a beast. And For then... Sure. Um, Next up, oh, here. So I also want to mention because hopefully to start more, there is some really good Muay Thai on one, and they're all using four ounce gloves. So they can't catch like a pop. Oh. <laughs> so wait, Prime's going to carry Muay Thai fights too? Well, no, one does it. So they mix in Muay Thai and MMA on the oh. same card. That's just what one does because it's more gotcha. Asian. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, okay. But they all use four-ounce gloves, so they can't be blocking the same way and shit. So, yeah, man. It was a nice one. This is uh, Panpaya. Oof. <laughs> yeah. And there was a com some other ones, too. So there was some good, good fights on that one FC card. It was a good showing for them on Amazon Prime. 
Um, and then, yeah, we'll move on. Albuquerque, New Mexico, Bare Knuckle FC. There's only a couple reasons why I'm to talk about is one, the main event. This thing was ridiculous. So this is Christine Ferreira versus Taylor Starling for the Flyweight Championship. Uh-huh. And bro, like, Killaby Starling wanted all the smoke before the fight. You know, like, <laughs> look at this, look at this way in. Yeah. He was talking noise. Yeah. And then the, the, the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. There was also another guy who was like, I'm going to fuck your dog. What the? Yeah. At, the, at this way. That's in. terrible. Who says that? The homie <laughs> had his dog with him. It was like this Boston Terrier. So like little dog. He's like, I'm going to fuck your dog after the fight. Like Everybody's like, what? <laughs> so bare knuckle is wild, bro. Oh, like, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say, okay, if you're saying something like that, you are where you are for a reason. Yeah, yeah. You're at bare knuckle for a reason. Yeah, there's definitely a guy who's like, you know, something like, you know, you I think he ran out of material. He yeah. saw the dog. He's like, you yeah. know what? Dog's exactly. fair game. Why yeah, not? It was something about like, oh, like oh, you de- deserve know. a bitch or something. I don't know. But yeah, he's like, I'm gonna fuck your dog, bro. I said, yeah. Okay. That one's gotta throw everybody off. <laughs> everybody, even their promoter. Like, what? <laughs> Hold on, bro. What? We're sponsored by Blue Chew. Oh no, wait. Is Blue Chew? Blue Chew's not talk. Fuck. Oh, never mind. No, I'm thinking Blue Buffalo. My bad. Hey, only fans, <laughs> though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. I'm like, okay, these cats. Hey, they're getting money from somewhere, right? All right. Okay, so, but yeah. Main yeah, event. so back to, back to the story. So right, right, right. wanted all the smoke. So the start of the fight. And she catches her there, right? Uh-huh. Little, maybe off balance, but catches her, you know? And then she puts it on her. The misfit comes in. Now, look at this. We're only, what? Minute and a half in the fight. Into the first. Yeah. Was not enjoying it, it looked like. And then no. here we go. I can't. Oh. Eesh. That's I I when do you ever see that? That's the that's tough. That's tough to see that kind of like I'm done. Like ooh, and then you ooh. That's just ew, it makes me cringe. Sorry. It's rough, man. I yeah, mean, that's Especially because you're going out there. You're putting yourself out there like that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then as soon as it happened, there's not even a second thought. It's like, eh, I don't. But she's fought for before. So I don't really get it. Who knows, man? Maybe yeah. it was just a different type of experience. Maybe Misfit just had some fucking dynamite in those hands. And she was like, yeah, oh, I'm not playing with too, this. Or Misfit wasn't fucking around. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she's like, this isn't a press conference. This isn't a way in. This is yeah. actual fight, son. Yeah, exactly. And this is how the game's going to go. And then another honorable mention, John Dotson, you know, former MMA flyweight, coming in to bare knuckle and getting it done. Twenty uh, something second. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looked good. Looked as fast as he always does. Like him and him and Mind Mouse were always so fast. Watch, watch. Damn. Looks like a little guy too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and Mighty Mouse used to fight all the time. I think they fought like three times. This Finishing is with what? Crazy one. man! It's like a street fight, but there's people watching. Oh yeah, and then also honorable mention it was his brother was fighting that night as well, and also recorded a first round knockout with like within the first minute. Gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. So, Albuquerque. So it's, like I said, I think there's. Bare Knuckle, I think, is kind of getting their shit together, and it's getting, like, a little bit better of promotion as we go, you know? Like, right. then they have unique fighters, they're gonna have uh, two of the biggest names in uh, Muay Thai, Bull Cow and Senchai. They both signed with the, the, the promotion, so we're gonna see them fighting soon, so I think the... Keep an eye on Bare Knuckle. It's Bare Knuckle FC. There's the other shit, like, Backyard Brawl and all that stuff. That stuff is <laughs> bad. But Bare Knuckles is a pretty good product. It's getting better. And yeah. you know what I'm saying? They had Mike Perry. They're a upping bunch their of... game. Yes, exactly, exactly. And then, uh, did you want to do the honorable mention for uh, the man going in the Hall of Fame? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yes. Because uh, it actually happened here in Las Vegas uh, this past weekend. Um, it was the induction of, in the, the Boxing Hall of Fame. And obviously, as you can see on the image, Andre Ward, and rightfully so. The man had a great career, 
put in some awesome fights, took on some great fighters, of obviously most notably Sergey Kovalev, beat him twice, made him basically quit the second fight, and I retired undefeated, and more importantly, retired on his terms and actually stayed retired. So to me, that's a huge thing, because he could have come back, he could have been enticed by money, maybe a Canelo fight, maybe some other name out there, but he actually stayed he stayed to his word and said, no, nope, I'm done. I'm good. Um, I've I've done everything I've wanted to do in boxing. And he accomplished a lot, man. Yeah. So props and to him. And great it's awesome to see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He does a great job on ESPN. Yeah, and that's great. why he wasn't on the uh, Pedraza-Comey fight because it happened um, the same weekend uh, as the fight. That's why he wasn't you. there. Hell, uh, yeah. Congratulations so, to Andre Ward. Yep. Congratulations. And then I think... Yeah, we're going to have uh, one of you back this week on mm-hmm. uh, Tuesday. And then we're going to be talking about some fights this weekend. We have uh, Taitu Vasas versus Cyril Gan for the heavyweight division, which would be very interesting to see. And uh, yeah, we, got, uh, we, have, we, didn't, we didn't touch on uh, the entire Ruiz Ortiz card, so we will do that as well for boxing. Oh, yeah. All right. And what else? Comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Absolutely. Please. And hit that bell notification button so you can see when the next episode pops up. Hell yeah. All right. Just bleed. Thanks, guys.